Okay, so now we're going to be looking at the second type of control charts, which are attribute control charts. And the thing about this is what we're going to be doing is we're going to be counting um, either conforming or non-conforming, which really means defe defective or non-defective, counting the number of defects. And we're either going to be doing it in a defined batch and then calculating the proportion of defects, or we're going to be calculating the number of defects. So there's kind of about, there's four types of charts, the fraction of non-conforming, which is either a P or an NP chart. So the, in this one, we're going to be calculating um, some proportion of the sample size that's non-conforming. And then there's a C chart where you actually count the number of defects. Now the difference between a P and a C is that there's kind of can be an unlimited number of defects. Like for instance, on a piece of, on a, on a paint job, you can find more than um, multiple defects on each paint job. So that's what um, the C would do, count for you. And then there's the number of non-conforming parts, another non-conforming defects per unit. That's the U chart. And then there's a time between non-conforming charts, and that one's used when there's um, very low defect rates. Just like on other charts, we're going to have um, a center line, an upper control limit, and a lower control limit. Um, so, for, so for the first type of chart, which is a P chart, the equation um, looks like this, where the number of defects, D, in a batch um, of N size, calculates just the proportion or the percentage. It's usually a proportion. So in this case, it's a binomial distribution. So in a binomial distribution, the mean is p, and the variance is p times 1 minus p over n. And then you can also see that that really does relate to this, um, the um, control limits being three standard deviations. So this is a um, variance, so the square root of that is a standard deviation. So we say three standard deviations away from the mean up or down are the two control limits. Now, P can be a target value, but it is often an average value. So sometimes if you have a target of we only want 3% defects, we can use that number, or we can use a um, the actual number of defects. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at an example. So this is an example where we take 10 samples of 20 each and we calculate how many defects, um, defective parts in there and then calculate the proportion. So if we look at those over those 10 samples, we had 36 defects and that means there was, and there was a total sample of 10 times 20 or 200 and so that means a 0.18 is the p hat or the proportion of defects. So if we go ahead, just go ahead and calculate these values of um, the mean which is 0.18 Time, plus or minus three standard deviations of the um, of the in the standard deviation equation is there. We get that um, the lower control limit is at minus 0 .7, 0 0.077, and the upper control limit is at 0.438. And if we look at that, that is um, the negative 0 0.77 is no such thing as that low of a, a negative proportion. So we go ahead and put that at zero. So when we create the control limits, they'll be from 0 to 0.38 and with 1.8 in the middle. And then we can start um, uh, plotting those proportions. So what, what can happen in these kinds of control charts, we can um, actually change the sample size. So if you go through and you change the sample size, because of the equations that are based on the right here. The equations are based on the number of samples you take, so the control limits are going to change depending on the number of um, sample, the number of samples. So you can see the upper and lower control limits can adjust. So in that case we have upper control limits that change and this is just because we change the number of um, the sample size. And we can do that. It's perfectly fine to go ahead and um, do that when you're designing a control system. So in this case we're going to look at a C chart where we're going to look at the, num the non-conforming defects. So the number of times that we have a defect in a sample. And so in this case I'm actually taking, um, I took samples of 20 and I had um, 30 of them that I went ahead and took. On average I get 0.49 um, defects per sample. 
Now the difference between this and the, the um, this is a C chart, the difference between this and a P is the P is a proportion, so it only can be between zero and one. On a C chart, it can go from zero defects all the way to infinity, because we can have multiple, multiple defects on each um, on each item. And but and so that this is a Poisson distribution when we use this type of definition of defects. And the equations are here where um, C is the average number of defects and the square root of C is the um, standard deviation. And so we can just go ahead and plot it like this. So in this case, we have, again, we have lower control limits at minus 1.72, which is not possible, so it goes to zero. So it's between 11 and zero are the values. And then we'll, we would go ahead and put that on a control chart. Um, another thing that we can use, another kind of control chart we can use, is if there's very low defects, that we can actually measure the time between defects. Um, and in that case, we can use a Weeble distribution, and all we're going to do is we're going to convert the time be between defects, which is the value x, using this Weeble di distribution, we bring it to the point 277, that becomes a y distribution that now is normally distributed. And, um, and then we can just go ahead and deal with that like it is a variable associated with the time between defects. Um, so one of the questions then that becomes, what do, what do we, how do we know what to use, a variable or an attribute? Um, an attribute is a little bit easier to calculate, and also you can pick, a, you can pick up a variety of types of defects when you're doing um, an attribute chart. A variable chart, though, will give you more information. You'll have both the standard deviation and the mean on that. So if at all possible, we try to use a variable chart. Um, but in reality, probably an attribute chart is, is used quite a bit also. Another thing is just the guidelines for control charts. So first of all, we determine which process characteristic relates to the quality. Remember, on our clock, we decided we, it, was, it was hard for us to decide well, what actually did relate to quality. And what, but once we've decided that, then we determine whether the chart should, where the chart should be implemented. So where in the process we should check things, and then we choose the proper type of control chart, whether an attribute or a variable. So that pretty much sums up control charts. Um, we'll just be practicing more and more about control charts in class.